Today, I wanna to talk about two Macs that are, in my opinion, criminally overlooked in terms of being an absolutely fantastic package at a fantastic affordable price. And folks, one of those two Macs runs Intel. That's right, an Intel Mac that you should actually buy. So make sure to leave a like down below, get subscribed, and let's talk about the two most underrated Macs. Today's video is sponsored by Anchor and their new 563 USB-C docking station 10-in-1 for M1 MacBooks. This thing has a plethora of ports. Around the back, there's Ethernet, DisplayPort, two HDMI ports, and the USB-C connection to your Apple Silicon Mac that supports up to 100 watts of power delivery. Around the front, there's two USB ports, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 USB Type-A port, as well as a USB 3.1 Gen 1 USB-C port, and a headphone microphone combo jack. Uh, that's a lot of ports. This is the kind of connectivity that makes your Apple Silicon Mac into an absolute powerhouse, even unlocking an ability that M1 owners have always wanted, triple monitor support. That's right, you can use all three outputs simultaneously for 4K 30 through HDMI 1 and 1080p through HDMI 2 and DisplayPort. It also features DisplayLink technology to stream media to double monitors. You can even connect this thing to a 16-inch MacBook Pro and charge that while still using the USB charger on the front to fast charge an iPhone 13 Pro Max. This thing really has it all. So if you want to check out the Anchor 10-in-1 USB-C docking station and supercharge your M1 Mac, check out the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. So what is the first most underrated Mac? Can I get a drum roll, please? That's a terrible drum roll, try that again. All right, there we go. Ta-da! It's the M1 iMac. I have to be honest, you guys, I don't get why this thing isn't like a bigger deal. There we go, that's the rest of it. I mean, first of all, just look at the thing. This right here represents the biggest redesign that Apple has done in probably almost 20 years. Like, this is a monumentally different machine than the one that it replaced. And I know that a bunch of people were initially very sort of split on the white bezels and the chin, but I gotta say, I think it was worth it. This is a distinctive, attractive, and really unique looking machine. And it's not often that Apple products are unique because they're known for being clean, they're known for being attractive, but they're also known for being ubiquitous. You're not gonna stand out in a crowd if you have an iPhone. But this iMac, despite being the most affordable one out there, is a unique and interesting and personal looking computer, not least because it comes in a ton of fun colors. Now, I have the base model M1 iMac, and there were some people when this initially came out that were, again, split on that because you're missing out on a couple of things. You don't get Touch ID on the keyboard, you are missing a cooling fan and a GPU core, so it's not quite as powerful. Uh, you're also missing two USB-C non-Thunderbolt ports on the back and Ethernet on the power cord. So for a $200 difference, a lot of people said, well, don't buy the base model, just, just pay the 200, you get a lot for it. And while I agree that you do get a lot for that $200 upgrade, I think if you're someone who just wants a basic computing computer, you can save the $200 and be just fine. But the absolutely mind-blowing thing is that this machine has now been out for a year, which means you can find some absolutely ludicrous deals. I mean, Apple themselves sells this base model on refurbished for like $1,100. That's an insanely good deal, bro! I just went on Amazon and they have a renewed iMac in silver, the same one as mine, the base model, for $1,009. Dollars. What? Are you freaking kidding me? That is an unbelievably good deal. A thousand dollars even. Oh my God. And you can get the eight core GPU with half a terabyte of storage for the same price as the base model is new, $12.99. I mean, think about what you're getting for that. You're getting the M1 chip, a four and a half K 24 inch display, a 1080p webcam, 
really good speakers, really good microphone, the keyboard and the mouse are included, and it's all in this unbelievably thin and light and beautiful package for $1,100, the same as an iPhone 13 Pro Max. What? That's ludicrous. It actually makes me angry how little press this iMac has received over the years. I think that's because it came out in between the M1 Mac and the M1 Pro. So it got the new design, but because it didn't get anything in terms of a new or interesting chip, and because it wasn't a super high-end Pro machine, I think it kind of slipped under the radar. I noticed that there was less interest on my channel in this than there was on the M1 products that preceded it and the M1 Pro, Max, and Ultra that followed it. And the result of that is these things are widely available, very affordable, and a fantastic deal. I mean, this display on its own has got to be worth at least a couple hundred dollars, right? It's bright, it's extremely pixel dense, it's P3 color accurate. This is a fantastic display. And you're getting it for a thousand bucks with the whole computer attached to it? And the mouse and the keyboard? Why are people not buying them? Sorry. Um, I've had this iMac for over a year. I had it since launch day. And I've loved it ever since. I actually edited a bunch of videos on here and I found it to be very usable. Hi. Now the M1 chip is definitely not as good for video editing tasks as the M1 Pro. Those dedicated media encoders, the extra cores, they make a lot of difference. But it, for a thousand bucks, this is a very proficient machine. But what if you want something even cheaper? What if you want a Mac that is not only half the price of this, but is also upgradable. Well, I mentioned that this was the biggest design change that Apple has ever done over the model that it replaced, and the second most underrated Mac is in fact the model that it replaced. I give you the 21.5 inch 4K iMac. Isn't it cute? I mean, look at it. It's really small actually. Um, it's kind of funny because I'm so used to seeing iMacs of this design in 27 inches that when you actually see one of these, it looks like a cute little miniature toy, aw. That actually speaks to why this Mac is on this list, is because it seems like nobody bought the things. iMacs have been huge among content creators, but almost everyone that I know goes for the 27 inch, or at least did when it existed. But this was actually a pretty decent option that's been there all along. Now, I suspect the reason that these things weren't very popular is because a 21.5 inch screen, even though it's 4K, is a little bit small. I mean, a lot of people even said that about the 24 inch iMac, although I think a 24 inch screen versus a 21 inch, as you can probably tell, makes a pretty big difference. However, this thing is cheap, really cheap. This particular one was the base model. And so that came with a Core i3, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and the Radeon Pro 555X graphics. And you can pick those up for like under 500 bucks, which is ridiculously cheap. I mean, at that price, you're basically paying for a pretty nice display and then getting a whole computer and a mouse and keyboard thrown in for free. But it's not like the computer attached to it is total junk. I mean, the Radeon Pro 555X, that's the same graphics card that you would have found in the 2018 and 2019 15 inch MacBook Pros. So it's not exactly a screaming fast GPU. In fact, it's definitely slower than the seven core M1 by a little bit. But given the fact that this is half the price of even the cheapest refurbished M1 iMac, I wouldn't necessarily be kicking myself for having less performance, because it's half the price. But it's not just about being cheap. This Mac is also upgradable, which is a really huge benefit that Apple Silicon so far is completely missing out on. And that's not just hypothetical. I actually have upgraded this machine. In fact, you might recognize it from a video I did a year ago where I souped this thing up and built, well, effectively the most powerful 4K iMac ever made. And yes, it is even more powerful than the M1. So the thing is, the previous generation Intel iMacs use socketed CPUs. And contrary to what some people believe, there's no limitation on a firmware level for what CPUs go in that socket. It's a perfectly normal 
Intel socket. So your two limitations are, number one, whatever CPU generation is gonna work in the chipset, and number two, the power requirements of that CPU. Now, in this particular iMac, which shipped with a Core i3-8100 or something like that, that is a 65 watt TDP CPU, and because that socket is compatible with both 8th and 9th gen Intel CPUs, you can put a Core i9 in this. And I did. This thing has a Core i9-9900 non-K. The non-K because it needs to fit in that 65 watt TDP range. And the result of that is, well, dramatic because a Core i3-8100 is a four core, non-hyper-threaded, pretty dumpy CPU. But this thing, this thing kind of slaps. It significantly outperforms the M1 CPU in Cinebench. And because this thing also has upgradable RAM, I was able to take mine from eight to 32 gigabytes. And you can do all of that in this machine for around the same price as it would be to buy one of these. So which do you go for? Honestly, I'm curious to hear what you guys think because there's a lot of benefits to both of them. Uh, personally, I, I'm leaning towards the M1 because as fun as it is, to hot rod one of these things, you do have to fully disassemble it. So it's not an easy thing. And well, it's Intel. You're running on a limited platform. On the other hand though, the DIY right to repair hot rod enthusiast in me absolutely loves that you can pick up one of these things for less than 400 bucks and go from a dumpy Core i3 to a Core i9 and just absolutely liven this thing up and build something that was more powerful than what Apple even offered in this entire machine's lifespan. So I am definitely curious to know what you guys think. Which of these two machines would you choose? Let me know in the comments below and I will have these guys linked because honestly, I don't know why people aren't buying this gosh darn iMac. Buy more of these things, it's so good. Okay, sorry, I'm going down my rant again. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.